This is Twit. We've been talking about Intel a lot uh, lately for obvious reasons. They're falling behind on process. What happened with the 8086? Um, you know, what's going on with next generation processors? Boy, are those AMD Ryzen processors fast. Boy, are those AMD Ryzen processors fast and cheap. Do you, you remember when Intel was going to be a leader in Mo? Oh, wait. Do you remember when? It, so it's been a messy couple of years for Intel, to say the least. Uh, and that's not even getting into Melter, uh, Meltdown and Spectre or not Melter, although Melter does sound kind of good. Um, and, you know, then there was the issues with, you know, Brian Krasanich. Uh, you could say there's been some leadership issues, some direction issues, um, some issues maybe formulating a long-term plan to, to fight off the, the threat, if you will, uh, of ARM processing. Sure, he dumped $39 million in stock before the, the, the massive meltdown and specter flaws were publicly known. But that wasn't insider trading, just a coincidence. Uh, so he's finally resigned, of all things, uh, over a relationship with an employee, which is against the rules at Intel. I, I got to ask fraternization. Which, on one level, I get, because uh, one of the first large media companies I worked at was very unusual uh, in that they actually had a whole, there was a news, this was back when they still did like newsletters. There was a whole section of the newsletter that was about people who had gotten engaged or married who all worked at the company, which was, I thought, really surreal. Um, you know, and I, I get non fraternization policies. Don't date where you work. Uh, there's another earthier version of that phrase you may be thinking of right now as a listener. Yes. Uh, this just seems like this was, you know, this was this is not a case of nobody's claiming that this was harassment. Nobody's claiming that this was unwanted. It was consensual. Both parties were down with it. It was just against the rules, and it's become known. And now Krasanich is resigned. Does this does this reek of a convenient way to have him exit stage right while they look for new leadership? Well, you know, I guess two things on that. One, uh, usually a lot of sometimes this fraternization thing can be overlooked because, hey, this person is in a different section. And they don't report mm -hmm. to anybody else. And there's no, you know, superiority, inferior uh, type relationship. But everybody right. is inferior to Brian. And so, uh, <laughs> yes, that would be very inappropriate. And two, yeah, it's um, – it is very convenient because if you've looked at Intel in the past 40 years, mm -hmm. um, when they've had strong competition, their business has done great because they've always risen to meet the challenge. Mm -hmm. And if you look when the competition, such as like when the original Athlon was, was introduced, the Athlon 64, which Intel simply didn't have an answer for, they took that those those changes too hard. The competition – and they made tremendous products and, and and jumps afterwards. I mean, the Pentium 3 was was a really good product, especially when they went to copper mine. Um, you know, the Pentium 4 was was pretty crappy. But the the Core 2 Duo and the Conroe stuff, I mean, it just it just placed Intel so far ahead of everybody else. Then AMD had lots of stumbles. But we have not seen huge jumps in performance. Um core counts, anything, since they introduced the original i7-920 uh, and 940 and, and that generation of stuff. That was the, the the basic model. You had, at the top end, four cores, eight threads. Mm -hmm. And they have milked that and milked that and milked that. And sure, there have been some pretty decent iterations of products where we've seen a consistent increase in IPC, uh, better power characteristics, you know, better clocking throughout time. But We've kind of been stuck in the same place for a while. And a lot of that is, I, I, I think it is it is basically leadership. You don't have the vision. You're, you're enjoying the margins that you have without increasing your R&D when you think that, hey, you know, maybe things won't be going right in the future. Let's make sure and, and utilize some of this money we've we've been making and and make sure we continue to be ahead of the competition. And instead, it, it seems like in between the bean counters and them just kind of saying, you know, AMD is is one sixteenth our size. There's no way that they could produce anything that is going to cause any issues for us or that we can't match in rather quick order. But now we've got this perfect storm of 
Ryzen is a really good design. AMD is mm -hmm. leveraging uh, Samsung and Global Foundries and TSMC to not only have solid products right now, but in the next year, in 2019, it's going to be even better because they will be utilizing a seven nanometer product, probably from TSMC first. They may leverage Global Foundries later on. Um, Samsung doesn't sound like they'll be doing that, but uh, seven nanometer TSMC on paper looks very, very similar to what Intel attempted to do with their 10 nanometer process. But when you throw in the other factors about what Intel threw into their 10 nanometer process, it, it really does seem to me it was a bridge too far. They just, and I mean, it's obvious now because it's not working as it should. It's not yielding as it should. The products that are coming off of it are not that impressive. And mm -hmm. uh, they're they're hurting. I mean, 2018 is is good for them. I mean, they've reused the 14 nanometer process. They've they've uh, added to it. It's it's you know an iterative process. They're now what on 14 nanometer plus plus, and um, their margins are still great because they have a competitive product for 2018. We don't know what 2019 is going to bring at all. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah. I, I think the the in between manufacturing, uh, leadership and vision and you know I, you you can't argue that Intel is not doing well because they're right. doing extremely well. They have record after record quarter, and they're still going to do great throughout this year. They're going to do very good next year, even with these challenges. And and I mean they have done okay in widening their product base. They've they've kind of gotten out of mobile because. They just didn't put the focus on competing with ARM that they probably should have. And now they, they I don't know, they just feel like it's an area that is no longer viable, but it's such a huge market. And so maybe the board of directors is looking at this as like, you know, we don't like where we're going. Sure, things are good now, but looking down the lane, it's, it's looking grim. So yes, having this come up is very convenient for the board and the shareholders, because you're not firing this guy for his performance. Right. And the things you're seeing down the road, it's because he had this consensual relationship while he's married and with another person at Intel. It is something they could, you know, get him to resign and say that. And yeah. if you notice <laughs> their announcement, what was the second part of their announcement? Uh, well, the first part was... Um, that the resignation was accepted to show that, quote, all employees will respect Intel's values and adhere to the company's code of conduct, dot, 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 and that the board of directors has, quote, a robust succession planning process in place and has begun a search for a permanent CEO, including both internal and external candidates. And um, then at the bottom of that, the <laughs> forward-looking statements. Oh, by the way, our next quarter is going to be even stronger than even we thought. Right. <clears throat> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain yeah, because we're going to be doing great. And as, as, you know, certainly Ryzen is a, you know, a small chunk of, of, of the processor market at this point, but growing. And, and I think it's probably a huge chunk of the enthusiast market. But when you look at the 2017 financial results, um, $62.8 billion for the year, uh, record fourth quarter revenue of $17.1 billion. Uh, quote, excluding McAfee, fourth quarter revenue grew 8% year over year, with data-centric revenue up 21%. Um, full year revenue grew 9% year over year. That's huge numbers for a company this big. Um, yeah. $22 billion in cash. Uh, you know, from operations, return nearly nine billion to shareholders in 2017. Um, you know, they're raising their their cash dividend to 10 percent uh, for 2018. So there's there's no doubt. Whatever issues Intel has, um, and I think there's a lot of issues. The farther down the road you look, they've certainly diversified in a lot of creative ways. They're bringing in revenue in a lot of places. Um, the uh, I just I you know. Certainly, we're not big fans of the desktop is dead. Um, laptops <laughs> are for fools. You can do everything. You know, I, I watched a friend of mine edit a video and like a seven minute video on 1080p on a phone. It can be done. It is a miserable experience. There's a lot of things that, that desktops and laptops do considerably better than mobile devices at this point, even if they're from Apple. No offense. Uh, you know, not taken iPad Pro users. Um, but 
Yeah, I think this was a, you know, it, it, it kind of came out of nowhere. And it's, I think it was really convenient for Apple to give uh, uh, Mr. Kazanich a, a chance to exit so they could figure out what comes next. I'm really curious to see what comes next. Um, yeah, I think I think somebody saw the bleeding and they were more than willing to step up and stop it as soon mm -hmm. as possible. And, and, you know, Brian has done some interesting things. I mean, certainly bringing uh, in Jim Keller and uh, um, Raja Kadori. Uh, mm -hmm. They were that, that was those are big and previously kind of unheard of steps. You just don't bring yeah. in people from other companies to work at Intel. I mean, you you join Intel in your youth and and you keep trying Worked to stay employed. And eventually, you're going to be getting into these these bigger parts. So bringing in <laughs> uh, new blood is uh, you know it's it's a big deal. And uh, you know I think that was probably one of the bigger positives that uh, mm -hmm. Brian has left with that and is, is maybe a little bit more flexibility in how they do business. Right. And uh, we'll see if that pays off.